No matter whether you're training for a fight or training for fitness, we all want to improve our endurance, our stamina, because if you improve your endurance, guess what? You can train for longer, and if you train for longer, you can get better as well. And after all, who doesn't want to get better? So as you can see across the bottom of the screen here, I've stacked it full of great information for you to help improve your overall fitness so you can get better at boxing or just get in better overall shape and be healthier. And we're going to start this off with the ultimate run that you can do to improve your stamina. This is one of the best runs that you can do to help improve your endurance and your stamina for running. Now it is very, very hard, but when you start doing this running, you're gonna definitely be able to last longer in the ring doing your boxing training. Now for this, you need a running track. This is my terrible picture of a running track, but it's gonna be great for me to explain just how to do this run. And another great thing about this run is you can measure your progression so you know exactly how much fitter you're getting from the last time you did this run. Now I recommend you do this run once a week, and I'm sure if you're like me after you've done it the first time, the next time you're gonna do it, you're gonna get nervous, because you're putting your body through a lot. So the benefits of running is massive for boxing. Like I mentioned, this one specifically is gonna really help you with your endurance and your stamina, and we all want that. Also, running for boxing is great for weight loss. You're burning them extra calories. It's great for discipline. And another great thing about this one, it's great for your mentality, because you're gonna to want to give up. You're gonna to wanna to stop and quit when you're doing this run. So once you get through this, you know, it's gonna be great, and the benefits, like I mentioned, are massive to this. Now, when you're doing this, run, I highly recommend you use a heart rate monitor because this is going to help you track your progression. You know, why do we want to guess if we're getting fitter when we can measure if we're getting fitter? And with the heart rate monitor, I'm going to give you a method to be able to really measure your fitness when you're doing this. When I first did this run when I was training with Joe Gallagher as a professional. It was fantastic and I continue to do it from then on. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a good 10, 15 minute warm up. It's very important that we warm up our full body before we do a run, especially something like this, or you will get injured if you try and do this cold. Then we're gonna do the run, then we're gonna do a full cool down again. It's important that you cool your body down after the run. So what is this run? Like I said, we're using a running track. Now the standard running track is 400 meters long. So what we're gonna do, this is kind of the running layout here. We're gonna do 800, 800, 600, 600, 400, 400, and then I've some, got something special for you at the end. So how this works, we're gonna start off with the first 800 meters. We're going to start in the middle of the track here. We're gonna start the timer, time ourselves, and then we're gonna run all the way around as fast as we can. And then we're gonna go all the way around again as fast as we can, that's 800 meters. And then when you've done that 800 meters, you're gonna write down your heart rate. Now, depending on your age, weight, running ability, your heart rate could be anywhere from 165 beats a minute to 220 beats a minute if you're a little bit younger. So let's just say your heart rate is 190 beats a minute after you've finished that run. Now what I want you to do is time, the length of time it takes for your heart rate to go from 190 to 100 and 40. Now that's what we're going to be measuring. Now a real way to do this is by using the lap timer on an iPhone. So as soon as you've finished that run, press lap and what that'll do, that'll start a new timer and I'll tell you what your first lap was and that's when you can start your next timer which is your recovery rate which is 140. Now as soon as your heart rate hits 140, what you're gonna do then, you're gonna start your next 800 meters and you're gonna press that lap time again. That's gonna measure your time of your 800 meters and then your heart rate will probably be a little bit higher this time. You might be at 198, see? And then you're gonna time from that down to 140. Then you're gonna go again with your 600 meters. And this is the process that we do. So you do your run, you're timing your distance, and then you're timing your recovery rate to hit to 140. So now after you've done it, you should have a chart that looks like this, where you can see your running time and your recovery time. And now the last thing, after you've done all of these, what is this question mark that we're going to be doing? Well, this is one more run. This is a 200 meter run. And this is where you're gonna start from here, round, and you're gonna finish here. Now this here is 200 meters, doing this as fast as you can, but by this time, you're absolutely exhausted. So that 200 meters is gonna be very hard. And then after that 200 meters, what you're gonna do here, you're gonna measure your recovery 
as well. So you've measured all of your runs and all of your recovery, and it will look like this when you've got it in your notes or wherever you've got it written down. So what can you do to improve your numbers, to build your stamina even more and to measure this? Well, each time you do it, you've got to write your numbers down and compare your numbers. numbers. But before you do the runs, if you know, now let's say the first time you've done this, this 600 meters, it took you two minutes and 30 seconds to run around there. Now you know what you've got to beat. Keep looking at that timer when you're running and that's going to really help you beat your score. And then obviously you're measuring your recovery, measure your recovery times as well. And I guarantee you after two or three weeks of doing this, your overall fitness will be through the roof. Now that run was brutal. Now here are three stamina secrets that's going to really help you. That might kind of blow you away or you might be like, oh, I've heard of that before. Either way, it's going to help you a lot. You might be very fit, training very hard, but still getting gassed out when you're on the mitts, in sparring, in a fight, or even hitting the heavy bag. And you might be thinking, why the hell am I getting so tired? Because I'm fit. Well, on this video, I'm going to give you three tips to help you last longer when you're doing your boxing sessions. But this is a common thing. You'll be putting that graft in, getting in great shape, getting fit, getting stronger, but then... <sighs> Why is this happening? Well, this will really help you. Tip number three is breathing. Now this might sound simple because we breathe every single day without having to think about it. But what I've noticed since I've been teaching boxing is this is one of the hardest things to teach someone, how to breathe correctly when you're boxing. It's natural for us to want to hold our breath, but when you hold your breath, you get tired. If you've ever done some swimming underneath the water, you know, when you come up, you're exhausted because you're using energy and holding your breath at the the same time now this is the same with boxing if you're holding your breath and punching it's like swimming underwater so learning how to breathe and when to breathe is key when you're throwing your punches you want to exhale when you're moving in your outer range and you're moving around you know this is the time to recover but what tends to happen is when someone is in front of you if it's a mitt guy or if it's a sparring partner or even if you're on the heavy bags and someone is watching you all of a sudden we get tight and we hold our breath tense our muscles and this right here is burning too much energy now you're watching this video you're probably fit enough to do this all day long move around breathing breathing look i'm fit enough to do this all day long it's easy but then as soon as someone gets in front of you, then all of a sudden, my shoulders get tight, my legs get tight, my core gets tight, I start holding my breath a little bit more. But no, you've got to learn how to relax. Relaxing as if no one's in front of us, even when I'm here in the demo at the end, I explain it even more. But what it comes down to is getting into good habits of doing this so you can do it without thinking about it. But at first, you've got to think about it. You've got to drill it into your head. You've got to think every time you're doing a session, focus on your breathing. Now, when you do this, when you think about it and do it and think about it and do it and think about it and do it, you'll get to the point of being able to do it without having to think about it. And that's what we're aiming for here. Number two is power punches all the time. Every punch doesn't have to be hard. We can throw light punches to set up other punches. And now what happens is when someone comes to the gym, they might be standing next to you when you're in the heavy bag, all of a sudden, and I, I'm guilty of this as well, we try to impress. We try to punch hard with every shot. When you're on the mitts, people try to impress the coaches. It doesn't have to be hard. You should be working on light punches to set up the power punches. Because if you can't land a light, fast punch, you're never going to be able to land a power punch. And when I show you this demo at the end, you will understand exactly what I mean. And number one is wasting punches. We waste so many punches throwing BS combinations on a heavy bag or on the mitts or in sparring. You shouldn't be wasting punches. Every time you throw a punch, there should be a reason for it. Even if you throw a punch knowing that you're going to miss that punch, it should be to set up another punch. But often we try and throw a million punches to try and make us feel like we're real boxers. Real boxers don't throw a million punches. Now, if you're working on trying to build your overall conditioning, you should definitely watch my video on how I used to train as a professional but by all means throw lots of punches but if you're trying to conserve energy and last longer but if you're wasting punches it's just not going to work now i'm going to give you a great little demo of everything i've just said firstly breathing and one thing i love to do when i'm teaching people how to breathe in boxing is start by shadow boxing but with your arms down and not throwing any punches so basically you're moving around here now when i'm here you can hear i'm breathing focusing on breathing 
I'm totally raxed. I'm fit enough to do this all day long. You're fit enough to do this all day long. Now from there, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my hands up to my head. That exact same relaxation. Focusing on breathing, I'm fit enough to do this all day long. And then once I'm here, then I can start throwing the punches. So that right there is a great drill to start off with to get used to breathing and moving. Now when we add the punches in, I wanna exhale with the punches. <laughs> Back to the breathing, moving, easy, all day long, all day long. Now with the power punches, we gotta set them power punches up with light punches. So let's just see my big power punches, my big right hand, I can throw a jab, jab, then throw the power punch. But everyone doesn't have to be hard. I'm still getting power in that because the technique is right. Now the last one is waist and punches. As a pro boxer, I did lots of different workouts, but the most beneficial one was the most basic one. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I trained as a professional boxer. And you can do this workout too, and I'm sure you're gonna love it. During the end of my professional boxing career, I worked alongside Evander Holyfield with Tommy Brooks as our trainer. And I'm gonna give you the workouts that we did when we were in the gym. Now I understand that there is thousands of different boxing coaches out there that gives their fighters thousands of different workouts. I work with a bunch of trainers in my time, but on this video, I'm gonna tell you the workouts that I used to do alongside Evander Holyfield as a professional boxer. And this is kind of the, the general workout that boxers do. And it's a workout that I would recommend you to do as well, no matter where you are in your boxing career or your boxing journey. So it is a, a very good workout to do in the gym. Now, like I mentioned before, boxing training is different no matter who you're training with. When I was training for the Olympic Games, we trained a lot different to when I was training as a professional. We were training four times a day, four days a week, then two, two times a day, uh, one day a week, and then having two days off. That is very different to when I'm training as a professional. As an amateur, my sessions were shorter and a lot, I'd say, faster and, and different, lots of more variation. As a professional, what I'm gonna tell you now, it was a lot more redundant, the same thing over and over again. And that's what we're gonna get into. So a general session for me to come into the professional boxing gym would be, I would start off with a warm up, warming up all my body, all the specific muscles on my body. And I've done a full video on how to warm up correctly. Click the link below and watch that one after this video. It's a great video and it will give you a perfect understanding of what you should be doing for your warm up. After warm up, I would grab the jump rope and I would do four three minute rounds. I will be jumping, not on a hard floor, but on a, on a board with a sponge underneath it. So it's less impact on my knees and my shins. So I would do four three minute rounds of jump rope without the rest in between. And our rest time at the gym was 30 seconds. So four times three minutes is 12 minutes, plus the three 30 seconds in between, which is like 13 and a half minutes. Then from there, I would get in the ring to do me shadow box. And my hands would already be wrapped. I would wrap my hands up before I start my warm up at the beginning of the session. So now I'm in the ring and you can see here, I'm in the ring with Evander Holyfield. We are training alongside each other, doing our shadow boxing. When we're doing shadow boxing, we always used to do four three minute rounds of shadow boxing with 30 second rest in between. Now I would be focusing on different things while I'm shadow boxing. And if I had a fight coming up, I would be visualizing my opponent in there and visualizing how I can go to beat that opponent, different game plans and tactics, as well as, you know, throwing some fast punches in there, getting me heart rate up a little bit. But I wouldn't go flat out because you know, you're still kind of warming up in the first round or two of shadow boxing, warming up the specific muscles that you're going to be using for your for your boxing session. So I would ease up into the four, three minute rounds of that, focusing on different things. I would never just go in there without a, a plan. I would also always go in there with a plan of, well, like I said, whether it's my game plan against my opponent or whether it's a, or whether it's a working on a bad habit or something like that. It's very beneficial. And that's how you get the most out of shadow boxing by having themes for each round. So after my four three minute rounds of shadow boxing, then I would get the gloves on and I would either do sparring, which was two to three times a week. If I wasn't sparring, I would go on the heavy bag. But let's just talk about the sparring. So when sparring, depending where I was in my training camp, I would do four, six or eight rounds sparring. My last fight was an eight round fight. And I didn't do more than eight rounds sparring for an eight round fight. It would be three minute rounds with a 30 second rest in between each one then. Now after I'd done the eight three minute rounds of sparring with the 30 second rest in between, I would get out and take my head guards off and get onto the heavy bag. And I would do two three minute rounds with 30 second rest in between. So then after there, I would go on to the speedball. I would do two three minute rounds 
rounds and sometimes I would stop for the 30 second rest in between, other times I would just go all the way through. So I would be doing six minutes to six and a half minutes on the speed ball to finish it off right there. Then after the speed ball, I would get the mat out and I would do ab work, core work. I would do two three minute rounds of that with 30 second rest in between. And again, sometimes I wouldn't even use the 30 seconds, I would just go all the way through. But often with the abs, I would, they would be that intense, I would be really, you know, uh, hurting on that, so I would take me 30 second rests before I do my other one. Then from there, I would do a cool down and stretch for a good 10, 15 minutes and just relaxing and reflecting on the session, what I've just done right there. Now I just wanna reverse it back to the sparring. If I wasn't sparring, I would have just went and done the heavy bag, working on this thing here. And I would do eight three minute rounds of heavy bag with 30 second rest in between when I'm fighting for a eight round fight, focusing on different things, good form, Always, always focusing on good form. I always have my coach, Tommy Brooks, shouting, come on, Tony, move your head, hands up. Working on my bad habits all the time when I'm on that. Screen. And then after the bag, again, I would go to the speed ball. Then after the speed ball, go and do my abs, then do the stretch. So that's the session right there. I'm gonna put it here for you. So look, we've got the 10, 15 minutes warm up, followed by the 13 and a half minutes jump rope, followed by the four, three minute rounds of shadow boxing, eight rounds of spawn, plus two rounds heavy bag, or we would just do the straight, eight rounds of heavy bag, then followed by two, four, three minute rounds of the speed ball. Then from there, go into the two, three minute rounds of ab work. Then from there, we go straight to the stretching and cooling down and reflecting. Now this is the important thing, reflecting on your session, thinking about your session, relaxing, calming down, letting the heart rate come down, letting the body recover before you just get up and jump in the car and then drive home or wherever you're gonna go. Let the body relax and enjoy that stretch and, and enjoy that time after the gym to let your mind you know, just unwind a little bit and, and think about the session, think about your opponent, think about what you've done right, what you've done wrong, and if it was sparring or not. That right there is, is a crucial part of your session right at the end. After all this hard work, you need to recover because if you don't recover correctly, you can't train correctly. And remember what I said at the beginning, how to last longer, how to get the more out of your sessions, learn how to recover, will really help that. Let's talk about recovery. If you learn how to recover correctly from your training sessions, you will be able to do more in your next session. And the more you do in the gym, the better you get. And on this video, I'm gonna give you seven different recovery methods to do exactly that. So after a hard training session, you go back to the gym, the next day, you're gonna be better than you were the previous day, rather than being stiff and not feeling up to the session with low energy. You wanna have lots of energy and feel great and raring to go for that session. These are my top seven tips. And number one is the hardest tip of them all, but it is the most beneficial, so make sure you watch number one. And I've got a ton of experience with this. Let's get straight into it with number seven. Cooling down, stretching, and decompressing is key. Now, you might do a little bit of this stuff you know, and then out the gym, talking to your mates, texting, while you're doing a check on your Instagram. No, 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 no. That is wrong. You need to do a real good cool down. Some light stretching your full body and then totally decompress and lying down. Close your eyes, deep breaths. Try and get a moment of silence. Now I know it can be hard in a boxing gym, but really just lie there with your eyes closed and breathe for a couple of minutes. Really letting your body decompress. You've just put your body through a lot in that hard session. Now let your body relax. Give it a few minutes of just lying there and chilling out and decompressing. And that along with the stretching after the session will really help your recovery for your next session the next day. I see it way too many times. And guys, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, I used to do this as well. Where I would just go cool, get in the car after the training session, after I finish my abs and I will be gone and, and that was it. And then the next day I'll be, oh, I'll be back still. Oh, my shoulders are stiff and I'm, I'm sure that you've done this as well. But no, when you lie down, decompress, it's a game changer, I guarantee you that. Now let's move on to number six. Resting with sleep. Now this is, this is huge. Now let's talk about resting. When, when I talk about resting, I don't mean going to the shop with your friends, going shopping, mooching around the mall, or you know, having a game of basketball or a game of football. That's not resting. If you can, rest, get your feet up in between, in between training. Now I was blessed enough that I was a full-time professional boxer and I could do this, I would have my feet up. I would play on the PlayStation in between training sessions, letting my body recover correctly. I wouldn't be going around my friend's house or going to the shopping centers or going out on a night out and, and not drinking. That's not letting your body recover. If you wanna, 
be elite, you need to rest. And then moving on to sleep. Sleep is so, so important. Sleep is something that I've learned about since I've retired from boxing. I wish I knew more about this when I was boxing because there's so many benefits to sleep. And when you're asleep, in a deep sleep, your brain is recovering when you sleep. Your brain cells go to work when you're asleep. It stores new information. It gets rid of toxic waste and it helps your full body recover while you are asleep. So it's important that you do that. I've been studying this now for some time. My ring even tracks me sleep every single night for years now, but really be aware of this. Okay, let's move on to number five. Your diet and hydration. Oh my goodness, this is super important. You want to be hydrated all the time. And one thing that I recommend is these. And I'm not just seeing it because they're my friend's company. This is Hydratech Instant from Onnit. And this right here, you just pour it into your bottle of water, shake it up and drink it. And it's full of electrolytes, putting the salts back into your body that you lose when you sweat. And I used to use a hydration drink similar to this when I was fighting. I would have this during my training session and after the training session as well, because if you're like me, you sweat a lot through your session, it's not just water that's coming out of your body, it's all your salts and electrolytes as well. So you wanna replace them and replace them by using supplements like this. There's also amino acids that you wanna get into your body 20 to 40 minutes straight after your session. This really helps with your immunity and helps rebuild your muscles and all that good stuff. Wanted to also have a great amino acid called glutamine. I highly recommend them. Now, the other thing that you can get is creatine. I'm sure you've heard of creatine. and It's not just for big, strong bodybuilders. It's for everyone to help muscle repair and help endurance as well. And again, I wanted to have a great creatine. Now, I'm not just trying to say this to sell them to you. These guys are legit. There's thousands of different supplements out there. You know, if you are going to take a supplement, please do research. Please use a great one because there's so much BS out there. I love all the products from Onnit. And you can go to onnit.com forward slash boxing and get 10% off their entire website. All of the products on there, like I said, they're great. I think they're really, really good and I highly recommend them. So go and check them out. Massage. Massage is great for recovery, but not the type of massage you might think where you might have someone stepping on your back, one of them Thai massages and proper bouncing or getting the elbows stuck in there. No, I'm talking about a soft tissue massage, not a deep tissue massage. Soft tissue is going to really help the blood flow to the muscles that need it to recover. So if you can get a soft tissue massage after a session, you will really feel the benefits of that. Moving on to number three, which is training. What, Tony? Training? How do you train to recover? Well, let me tell you this, my friend. Low anabolic training is going to help the blood flow back through your body to help you recover. Yes, it really is. Now, I don't mean doing a hard intensity session, a hit class, anything like that, because no, that's just going to make you worse. I'm talking about a low anabolic training session. Now, this is low intensity, no more than 50% of your maximum heart rate. You might go for a five, 10 minute jog, a, a fast walk, you know, a little bit of light shadow boxing, just getting the blood flowing through your muscles. Uh, yeah, that is huge. Now, let's just see you've done a training session one day and the next day you are, you know, just can't move, you're stiff and all that. Do a very light session. I'm talking on this pace here, where yeah, you're just getting out to get that blood flowing through your body, yeah. That right there will really help you a lot. Now, you might be thinking it's stupid, but no, I guarantee you that will help get the blood flowing through the body and it'll prevent that lactic acid from continuing to build up even more, which we really don't want. Now, moving on to number two, which is heat therapy, which is getting in a sauna if you've got access to one. Now, don't be getting in there for like an hour and sweating and all of them electrolytes that you've just put back into your body from the Hydrotech from on it, they've just gone, lost them all again. No, I mean, getting in there for about 20 minutes and moving around while you're in there as well. This again is really gonna help the blood flow to the parts of the body that really need it. Helping get more oxygen to the blood, which is crucial for recovery. If you can get access to a sauna, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend getting in there. Not after every single session, but getting in there. But that being said, there is so many benefits to getting in a sauna five times a week. I get in a sauna five times a week, but now I'm not a professional athlete. I don't have to focus so much on how I feel the very next day for training because I'm not. But I tell you what, a sauna really does help me with uh, feeling good, keeps my blood to my brain, and I also just feel a little bit more energy as well. Okay, now moving on to the bad boy, the big one, the hardest thing that you will do 
to recover, but by far the best thing you can do to recover. Now that is getting to an ice bath or a plunge pool. I absolutely love these. And since I've just gotten one from the cold plunge company, I am kind of addicted to these things now. What I used to use when I was boxing was this here. It's a trash can and I go to the dollar store, I'd get six bags of ice, pour them in there, bit cold water, and that really there was, oh, I couldn't stand out at the time. Now I've got the plunge from the cold plunge company and this is really helping me in everyday life. It gives us more energy. And some of the things that this cold plunge is great for, it's been proven that ice baths can help muscle recovery after a hard workout. They can prevent muscle soreness, which we all get when we have had a hard workout. They also boost your mental health. And I've been a fan of cold showers as well. If you ever, ever felt down, depressed, anxiety, getting under that cold shower can really make you feel better. It gives you a real sense of achievement because you've just accomplished a task. And when you're in a cold shower, there's not much that your brain can think of apart from, I can't wait for this to end so I can get out. And similar to the ice bath, although now I've learned to control me breathing and I've learned to enjoy the ice bath a lot more than I did when I was fighting, it still really helps with your mental health. Now, another big benefit of the ice bath cold plunge, what I'm really experienced now, is it helps with sleep. It really, really does. My sleep has never been better since the last two weeks, I've been getting in the cold plunge every single day. And the great thing about the cold plunge is I don't have to put ice in. I just set it at a temperature that I want, which is generally 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and I get in there for 15 to 20 minutes keeping me hands out, which makes it a lot easier. You should definitely check out the cool plunge. And if you've got a space to have a cool plunge, it's definitely worth the investment to get one of these off these guys. And if you use code BOXING at the checkout, you're gonna save $150 as well. I don't promote BS ever. This is legit and I absolutely love it. It's changed my life and hopefully it will change yours as well if you get one. Believe it or not, one of the best things that you can do for your stamina is by having better sleep. You might be thinking, what? Sleep, that's easy. Well, let's talk about it. Eat, sleep, boxing, and repeat. You might have seen this quote somewhere, even on one of my t-shirts that I sell on my website, and I love this quote. Now, a lot of people who are into boxing, including myself, kind of live by this. But when I was fighting, I really only took two of them three things seriously. My diet, I always took that seriously, and I always took my training seriously as well. Never did I realize or understand or know the importance of sleep and I definitely never thought that the better quality sleep that I had the better I would have been at boxing and if I knew then when I was boxing what I know now I guarantee I would have been way more successful in boxing maybe that bronze medal would have been a silver or gold I don't know and on this video I'm going to tell you why you really should be prioritizing your sleep not just to help you improve your boxing but also to improve your life I'm going to be giving you seven tips to fall asleep faster and have a deeper sleep now if you're like me you'll not have a realized how important sleep was and it's actually the single most best thing that you can do to improve your health. When we are sleeping the things that happen to our brain is pretty amazing. It really helps keep information what you learn throughout the day in your training sessions into your brain like all of the punches, all the combinations, the different techniques. With good sleep it helps your brain you know lock them in. It also helps with them fast twitch muscle fibers which you need to increase your reaction speed. Who doesn't want to get better reactions especially when you're training in boxing? And what it does like I said it kind of cements it into your brain and it really helps you with long-term memory. And if you follow me for a while you know I'm very concerned about brain health which sleep is one of the best things you can do to help improve that. Now on the flip side scientists are doing studies and the evidence has shown that lack of sleep can do the opposite. You will become a lot more forgetful and with boxing you know you don't want to be forgetting these different punches combinations counter punches let's say you're a sparring and you try something new and you land it and it's great with lack of sleep you could actually forget that one move that you did now let's be honest we've all trained when we're tired because you know you didn't get a good night's sleep now if you compare that to when you've had a, a great night's sleep it's literally night and day the difference how you feel and how you perform in the gym. Now the more energy you've got, the longer your sessions can be in the gym. The better you perform, the better you're going to get. Also scientists are seeing 
With quality sleep, it's our brain's way of cleaning up and rewiring repaired damaged cells. Now them damaged cells might be from being punched in the head. Like I said, I'm really studying about brain health right now and sleep is one of the best things you can do. Now it's not just repairing our brains, our bodies as well. You know, when you've had that hard session and your muscles are really sore the next day, or if you've got any injuries, a solid night should I can do wonders for this. And there's a thousand more benefits that I could go on about why you should be getting this great sleep. But just trust me when I say for a better life, for better boxing, make sure you prioritize this. And these tips will really help you do that. Number seven is something that I do every single night without feel. And that is listening to rain sounds or white noise. We've got an Alexa in the bedroom. We tell Alexa to clear rain sounds and you know, this sound comes on. This helps our brains focus on the sound and not get startled or woken up by little noises that we might hear. White noise and rain sounds contain all the frequency of sound, so anything in a higher frequency, it might be a dog barking, a, a phone chime, won't startle you or wake you up. Especially if you live in a city next to a busy road where there's all sorts of noises happening all the time. It's also good because our brain, you know, tends to focus on continuous repetitive humdrum noises and it creates like a meditation style feel. I've never been good at meditation, but this kind of, you know, gets my mind wandering. So I highly recommend white noise or rain sounds. Number six, you might have seen these. It's like a, a plaster that you put over your nose called a breathe easy. And this helps you breathe better. And if you've been punched in the nose many times like me, and sometimes you know you can't breathe good, this really helps, you know, get the oxygen into your body, what we need, you know, to sleep properly. Because what happens is the oxygen enters your blood from your lungs and it travels to your organs. So if your nose is blocked and you might be snoring, not getting all that oxygen in, this opens up them airways so you can breathe much better and get that good quality oxygen into your body. I've noticed since I start wearing these things, they really are helping me and you know, I highly recommend them for a good night's sleep, especially if you've got a, a dodgy nose. Tip number five, moving on to your body's temperature. This is a very important. Naturally, our body temperature drops during the night through our sleep, but if your room is too hot, you're gonna wake up. So keeping your body cool while you sleep will help you stay in a deep sleep. Thermal regulation is a word that I can't spell. This is a word you might have heard of. This is when your body is using temperature as a way to help itself. So when your body is cooling itself when you're asleep, this is a way of conserving energy. And because of your room temperature, it's making your body work harder, you know, to keep it cool. And number four is a big one. Having food before bed, especially big meals. This is harder for your body to sleep and to do its job while sleeping because while you're asleep your body's working on digesting all our food which is making the body work more so rather than your body working on you know cleaning your cells out and recovering it's not it's working on digesting that food you might have done this in the past where you went to bed hungry and you've noticed that you've slept a lot better especially if your room's cool you know you have a great night's sleep now tip number three is a big one i've not drank alcohol now since 2019 now i'm not telling you not to do that but don't rely on alcohol to fall asleep. I used to think I needed a few glasses of wine to fall asleep or I would fall asleep better because of the wine. And yes, you might fall asleep faster, but the quality of sleep is terrible. Because what happens when you have alcohol and you're asleep, your heart rate raises through the night by, I would say, at least five to 10 beats a minute. So now your heart's working more. So that's just another stressor on your body that you don't need when your body wants to repair itself during that time. Now a huge one, and I guarantee most of you are doing this, and that is on your phone before bed, like this. Getting them blue lights into your eyes. It is absolutely terrible if you're gonna do this. Them blue lights are stopping your body from naturally making melatonin. This is the chemical that helps you fall asleep. And it's basically messing up your body's natural internal clock called the circadian rhythm. And one tip I've got for this, which has been a game changer for me, is leaving me phone in a different room. I remember when I was fine, I used to think I need to lie in bed to watch TV to fall asleep. As soon as I got rid of the TV out the bedroom and getting rid of my phone out the bedroom as well, I fell asleep much better and much faster. Now a big tip for this is switch your TV and switch your phone for a Kindle or a book, you'll definitely fall asleep faster. And getting in the routine of doing things like this is an absolute game changer. Now tip number one, learn from an expert about sleep. I'm not an expert about sleep, I'm an expert about boxing, but it just so happens that my wife is a sleep expert. She's created a YouTube channel giving you all of the best 
methods and tricks and secrets to fall asleep and have the best night's sleep ever. You should definitely check out her channel and look through some of them videos. I'm sure you'll love it. So the method that I used to use for falling asleep the night before a fight when you've got a hundred things going through your mind, a hundred worries going through your mind, the goal is to clear your mind from all of them things. What I used to do, I would lie there in bed trying to get relaxed as possible close my eyes and I would think and visualize a corridor. Now this corridor can be any color you like, but the corridor has got doors either side going all the way up. What you've got to do is visualize you taking out one of the things that you're thinking about. So you're, you're thinking about your fighting. You want to take that out of your mind, open the door, put it in the door, close the door. The next thing you're worried about, tickets. In the next door, close the door, worried it. And now once that door is closed, that's out of your mind because it's in that door. Every other little thing that you've got going on in your mind, you want to put it in these different doors and close them doors. And now you're only thinking about this one corridor. Things will slowly creep into your mind. Like you might start thinking about the fight that you're upon again. Quickly grab it, put it in another door, close that door. Now you're lying in bed thinking about this corridor. And what that does, it kind of tricks your mind into falling asleep. And now this right here is a very high level mind game that you can play on yourself the night before a fight or a big event. Now here are four more extra tips that's really going to help you improve that endurance. Now the first way you can improve your stamina and cardio for boxing so you can last longer in the ring or in the gym is actually by boxing. You may be thinking, yeah, well that's obvious, but what other things can I do to improve this? You know, but people don't even think about this. People are always looking for the next quick thing to help them improve their, their cardio and stamina, like a TRX or a cross trainer machine or an air bike. And then things are great and they've got a lot of benefits to them, but to improve your overall cardio and stamina, we need to box more. We need to measure our boxer. I'm gonna tell you in a minute exactly how you can measure your boxing when you're hitting the heavy bag to be able to see your improvements over time. What we want and what we're aiming for. Ultimately, we wanna finish the last minute of the last round as hard and as fast and as good as the first minute of the first round. And that right there will see measure your, your overall performance and your fitness. And what I want you to do over time is increase the rounds of your boxing and then increase the time of your rounds and also decrease the time of your rest. Example, if you're starting off four two minute rounds on a heavy bag with a one minute rest is great, especially if you can get the point of uh, finishing the last round as hard and as fast as you start the first round. Now you will still be tired. You will get tired doing this, but once you can do that, and then we can increase the rounds. So we've done four two minutes with a one minute rest. Then we go to five two minutes, one minute rest, six twos, seven twos, eight twos. And that's what you want to get to. Get to eight two minute rounds with a one minute rest at a great pace where you're not losing form and technique and not being sloppy in the end. Then once you get to, to that, then what we can start to do is we can start to increase the round time. So now we go to four three minute rounds with a one minute rest then five threes, then six threes, then seven threes, then up to eight three minute rounds with a one minute rest. Now this, as you can see there, that's a lot of sessions. It's gonna take time. Building your stamina and building your conditioning for boxing does take time. It's not an overnight thing. Then once you get the eight three minute rounds with a one minute rest, then we can start to decrease the rest time. Then we can go to four three minute rounds with a 30 second rest. Now this is going to be difficult. And then from there, we can start to slowly increase the round. So four threes with a 30 second rest, five threes, six threes, seven threes, all the way to eight three minute rounds with a 30 second rest. Now once you can do that and you start and you're finishing the round the same as you started the round, now we know that you're in great shape. And now this applies for mitt work, applies for sparring, applies for everything else, you know. Eight three minute rounds is a great indicator of your fitness. Now I'm purely talking about eight three minute rounds on the heavy bag. This is after you've done your warm up, jump rope, or whatever else you do at the beginning. But this right here will increase your boxing, cardio, and your overall stamina. Now moving on to number two is running. Yes, good old road work. If you have seen the Rocky movies, which I'm sure you have, which you, if you haven't, you need to watch them. You'll see Rocky Balboa getting up, doing his runs. Yeah, I know it's fiction, but 
There's a reason why he showed that. Because that is what boxers do to increase their stamina and their cardio. We run. Now there's a few different types of runs that you can do. There's the long distance run, there's a far leg run, there's sprints, there's hill sprints, there's steps. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. But what I would encourage you to do is try and mix it up. Run as well as you're boxing. So Example, if you are boxing three times a week, try and get two runs in a week as well, or even three runs. Now, them runs can vary. You can do a long distance run, three to five miles, steady state run. Then you can do another run, can be a far leg run, where it might be a 20 minute run, where you're sprinting and recovering and resting. So, what I used to do was lampposts, you know, the lampposts on the, on the streets. I would sprint to one, jog to another, sprint to one, Jog another one. It's a it's a really tough uh, tough run, far leg run, and you can do you know you've got your, your sprints where you know you you might be doing a hundred meters dash where you'll be there you'll do a hundred percent you recover for a minute run back a hundred percent recover for a minute and then doing six to eight of these sprints is really good as well. It's going to really open up your lungs and really help increase your cardio and overall stamina. Then let's move on to number three. How do you increase your stamina and your cardio? Well, you're going, this is gonna really, really surprise you, and it is rest and recover. If you're training like a madman, you're doing an hour every morning, an hour every night, and you're not giving your body time to recover, you're not going to be able to improve your overall stamina. Now, it doesn't sound right, right because you're like oh, well i'm working hard i'm doing this but think about it this way if you're going into the gym and your body is not recovered from the session before because you did the session yesterday but then after that you went out to the supermarket you went and had a game of football with your friends you went and played basketball with your mates you were messing around and your body's not got that chance to rest and recover now the next day you go to the gym you're still going to be a little bit tired so you're not going to be able to put that work in when you're on the heavy bag trying to do your eight three minute rounds because you're you're tired but if you had that rest and recover the next time you're in the gym you're going to be able to do more work and like i said in tip number one the more work that you can do in the gym the better you're going to be if you rest recover and you're sharp you're going to the gym sharp you're going to be able to do more if not, you know, you're not. Now, how do you rest and recover? Well, you can kind of blend them into one because obviously resting, where you're not going out playing basketball or football or doing these other crazy things when you're trying to improve your boxing. But some things you can do is definitely by stretching after the session, making sure you warm up before the session. That is going to help you throughout the session and going to help you recover better. You can do things like massage, ice baths, saunas, if, if you've got access to them to help with your recovery as well. But, but stretching is, is definitely a, a big one for you and trying to stay loose and flexible. And another huge thing you can do, probably the best thing you can do for your rest and recovery is sleep. Get a good night's sleep. When you're sleeping, all of your muscles are repairing. Even the cells inside your brain is also repairing as well, regenerating. So if you can get a good night's sleep, deep sleep, good REM sleep, you know, it's going to really help improve that. And my wife has done a video giving you 10 tips to sleep better on her YouTube channel. You can click the link below after this and get these tips that you can do to really sleep better. Now, moving on to number four is going to surprise you, which is nutrition. What? How can my nutrition help me with my stamina and cardio? That's what you might be thinking. Well, think about it. If you are putting the right fuel into your body before training and after training, it's another thing that's going to help with your recovery is your nutrition you're going to do more in the gym you're going to be able to last longer when you're blasting that heavy bag you're going to, and the longer you last when you're doing that the fitter you're going to get and if you think about a car a car can't drive on no gas no petrol but we need the energy in your body to be able to move and move forward but not just any old crap you need the right foods and the right nutrition and the right things in your body that will help you perform better. Now how I like to think about the nutrition is kind of like a snowball effect. Now my good friend Aubrey Marcus wrote a book called Own the Day, Own Your Life. 
And one big thing that I took from his book is the little things that you do throughout the day all add up to make a big difference. And an example is if you have for breakfast some cornflakes with lots of sugar on and, and, and you're not hydrated, when it's time for you to come to the gym, you might be tired and, and lethargic and thinking, oh, I can't be bothered to go to the gym today. I haven't got the energy to do this. And then you go to the gym and your session's not as good because the nutrition in your body wasn't as good. Or you might not even go to the gym because you don't feel like it. Now let's twist that around. Let's just say you have some eggs and avocado and some bacon for your breakfast. And from there, you've got the energy, you've got the good fats, you've got the good proteins in your body. And when it's coming time to go to the gym, yeah, I feel good. I can't wait to go to the gym. You go to the gym, you prefer Form better and because you've worked out good and worked out hard now you go to bed that night you sleep better which is great for your recovery as well so now you're sleeping better that one small decision in your life made a big difference now that's going to roll on and your overall fitness and health is going to improve and that's another thing i want to mention there this is going to help your health eating good will help your health and now i'm not an expert in the nutrition field there's so much good content out there that you can find about nutrition but what i do know is that if you're eating good eating clean eating the right foods the right fats the right carbohydrates the right proteins when you should be your training will be overall a lot better which will improve your stamina and also hydration is key always stay hydrated if you go to the toilet and your pee is not clear you're not hydrated as much as you should be now i'm going to tell you something that you can do at the start of every session what i did that really did take me to the next level and that is how my work my workout was structured how do you structure your workout do you go in do you loosen your arms start hitting the heavy bag or have you got a great structure? Well, the structure that I used was I would go in, I would do a 10 to 15 minute warm up, warming up my full body, my legs, my thighs, my core, my shoulders, my neck, my arms, everything I was warming everything up. Then from there, I would get the jump rope and I would do four three minute rounds with 30 second rest in between but i wouldn't use the rest i would just go all the way through so i was doing around 14 minutes of jump rope non-stop after the jump rope i would do four three minute rounds of shadow boxing with 30 second rest in between now the warm-up the jump rope and the shadow boxing was before every single session and then from there i would do my heavy bag work my sparring my mitt work whatever else i would do after that but that right there is giving you the fundamental fitness that you need to you know really go to the next level and the, the fitter you are the more you can do the more you can do the better you're going to get at boxing now that right there is, is hard that right there in itself can be a workout for some people depending on your fitness level so you can start off you know lighter you can do your 10 minute warm-up which you should be doing anyway and then you can go into four two minute rounds of jump rope with a minute rest in between if you need it then from there you can go into your four two minute rounds of shadow boxing uh, with your minute rest in between as well and obviously like i said earlier on with a heavy back stuff you can slowly increase the time of the rounds and decrease the rest time but once you can get that at the start of every session your energy and your fitness will really skyrocket to the next level here is the intense run that we used to do when we were training for the olympics i don't know a boxer that doesn't use running as part of their training regime and on this video i'm going to give you a fantastic run that you can use this is the same run as i used to do when i was training for the 2008 olympic games and the benefits that you're going to get from doing this specific run is amazing so get your pens get your papers write this down you're going to love it now if you look at all the great fighters from the past to the present like some muhammad ali tyson fury mike tyson Canelo alvarez floyd Mir with it. they all do running as part of their training there's a bunch of benefits to running like your stamina and endurance who doesn't want to build their stamina and endurance when you're boxing training another great benefit is the weight that you're going to lose because you're burning a ton of calories as well then the other side is like the discipline when we're boxers we get tired and the last thing we want to do is go out for a run or get up early and do that run so it's great to build that self-discipline running's also great for explosiveness we all want to be explosive in a fight and this will help with that also running is great for your mental mentality especially this run i'm about to give you right here really helps getting you mentally strong and keeping focus this run is a quick run it's one of the fastest runs that we did you're actually only working hard for eight minutes and this run is called the four twos sustained running now we used to do this run on a running track this is my picture of a running track which is terrible i know now the standard running track is 400 meters long now you don't need a running track to do this run but i prefer it because you can really measure your progression and your fitness 
when you are doing it on a track. And I'll tell you exactly how to measure that in a minute. But right now, I'm going to tell you about the run. So we're going to start off with a warm-up. Now, you need to warm up your full body, not just your legs. You need to get that blood pumping through your body. Now, I've done a full video showing you how to warm up the full body. You can watch that video after this. But yeah, warming up is very important, especially on this run, because it's a sustained run. I'll explain that in a second. But yeah, if you go into a run like this, or just about any run cold, there's a good chance you will pull a muscle and you'll get injured, and that's the last thing we want. So now you've done your warm up, now it's time for the run. You're going to do two minutes of running, four times and have a one minute rest in between the rounds. So it's gonna be like four two minute rounds with a one minute rest in between. So you can start anywhere on the track. I like to mark off where you're gonna run. Let's just see you start in the middle here and then you're gonna run for two minutes as fast as you can all the way around the track and then wherever you finish off, see I finish here. Ideally, you wanna be getting more than one lap in two minutes. And then you're gonna stand there and then that's where you're gonna take your minute rest. You don't have to stand still. You can walk around, get that blood flowing, shake it out, deep breaths, focusing on recovery. And then what you'll do from here, then you're gonna go again after that one minute rest, another two minutes, and then so on and so on. So you've done four, two minutes with a one minute rest in between. Now with that, I don't mean you're gonna start here and you're gonna sprint as fast as you can because guess what? By the time you get here, you'll be absolutely exhausted. You've got to learn about pacing yourself, but not in a way where, you know, you're gonna finish the two minutes and you're just gonna be like, I want you to finish that two minutes exhausted. And after a minute, you will be exhausted, but you've got to push through that. Like I said, this is great for the mentality because your body wants to give in. Your body wants to stop this running because it's hard. But how strong are you? You need to get through that. You need to push through that. And it's great to do this run with someone else to kind of compete with them as well to help push each other along. Now, a few things you need to do when you are doing this run is one is stay relaxed. When you're running, you need to have good form. Just like I always say about boxing on this channel, having good form and technique, the same with running. And that will just get better over time if you're not used to doing this run. Another big thing is learning how to breathe. You've got to breathe correctly on here. Now, another thing what is very important is your recovery time, that one minute, use it correctly, breathe properly, get that oxygen into your lungs. If you bent over the wall, <laughs> you're not recovering. Chest forward, then big, big deep breaths. So control your breathing rather than letting your breathing take control of you. Now, if you don't do any running at all, and this is the first one you're doing, don't go 100%. Go probably between 60 and 80%. Enough where you're really tired at the end of it, but not enough where you, you, know, you can't walk for a week. And the next time you do this, which I recommend doing this once a week, you, know, you can then you know, step it up a little bit, but you wanna get to the point of being able to give it 100% every single time. Now, it's very important at the end of the run, you do your cooling down, you do your stretching, you let your body recover, properly. So what can you be doing to measure your performance in this? Well, it's pretty simple. Now let's just say you're starting here on week one. You're going to do your run all the way around. And let's just say after that run, you're finishing here. Now I know that I've just run 600 meters in round one. Now I want you to pull your phone out while you're taking that recovery and write down 600 for round one. And that's kind of where you want to be aiming to get 600 meters. And if you can get to 600 meters, that is fantastic. And then round two, again, you're going to run round. This time you get to around here, then you write down there 500 meters and so on. Now, the next time you do this run, you're going to know exactly what you've got to beat and how well you've done it. Now, this is how you're going to measure your performance on the run week by week. And my personal goal was to get 600 meters on every single one of them. And before the Olympics, I could do that. Now, let's talk about these few things that's going to help you last longer in the ring. Boxing is a full body workout. You're using just about every single muscle in your body every time you are hitting the bag sparring, fighting. So yes, you will get tired. But after watching this video, I'm going to give you four ways to be able to reserve that energy so you can last longer in your training session. And the longer you last in your training session, guess what? You'll get more out of the session, whether you're training, sparring, or fighting. Number one is don't always look for power punches. If every punch you throw is a power punch, bam, 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 bam. Doesn't matter how fit you are, you're going to burn out fast and get tired fast. You're gonna punch fast and light. Look for good technique. 
You know, it's kind of like if you went out for a run to try and improve your endurance that way, and you want to do like a three mile run, you wouldn't try and sprint the three mile, or you will get tired really, really fast. Same with punches. If you're looking for power every single punch, you will get tired very, very fast. Now, number two is don't waste punches. This is more for if you're in the ring and you're sparring or you're fighting. Don't be wasting punches. Don't be throwing punches that is not going to land. Don't be missing punches. You know, pick your punches. If you can pick your punches, you're not going to be throwing as many punches because it's hard to pick punches. But if you're picking your punches, I'm here, picking the punch. I'm here, I'm moving, I'm moving. Wah, wah, wah. Picking the punch, rather than wasting punches if you're training on a bag. <laughs> what I'm doing now, I'm wasting punches, getting tired, throwing unrealistic combinations. And if you're new to this channel, you will know that I love realistic boxing combinations. So throw realistic combinations and pick your punches. Number three is learn when to rest. If you're sparring, let's say for instance, it doesn't have to be action all the time. You don't have to be going head to head all the time non-stop trying to fight, you can steer relax, you can move your feet, you can work around and knowing exactly when to punch and when not to punch. This comes with experience but just think there doesn't always have to be action. You know, go for a little dance, get on your back foot, move, drop your hands, breathe. Yes, I said it, drop your hands and if your opponent's out of the way, I can do what I want with my hands. I'll put them behind my back and do what you want with your hands. You know, relax, breathe, know exactly when to rest. And now moving on to number four before I give you the conditioning exercise. Number four probably links with all of the other three and it's probably the most important, which is breathe. Know when to breathe. Now you might be thinking, Tony, what are you talking about? I breathe all the time without even thinking about it. Yes, you do. But guess what happens? As soon as you get in the ring or as soon as you're on a heavy bag and you try to punch hard, nine times out of 10, especially when people are new to boxing, they'll start holding their breath. You know, no, 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 no. You want to be breathing. You want to be exhaling with each punch. <laughs> When you're exhaling with each punch, you know, it's going to save you energy rather than holding your breath and using loads of energy. So that's the four right there. Don't look for power every punch. Don't waste punches. Know exactly when to rest and learn how to breathe. Them four things will help you save so much energy next time you're boxing. But even with them four right there and your boxing conditioning is not good, you will get tired. So you need to improve your overall boxing conditioning to be able to go longer in the ring. And when you do, then will help you amazingly. So how do you improve your boxing conditioning? Again, this is what I get asked so many times. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. Well, it is box, yes. You know, everyone's trying these new fancy things, these new fancy exercises or pieces of equipment, but you can't beat boxing to get better and fitter at boxing, hitting the heavy bag. If you can hit a heavy bag for eight three minute rounds with a 40 second rest, you are in great shape. If you can build up to hitting the heavy bag for long periods of time with a shorter rest, you're gonna improve your conditioning. Now, if you're new to boxing, eight three minute rounds is ridiculous. Go for four two minute rounds with a one minute rest in between. Once you start getting comfortable at like that, a couple of weeks, then you can slowly increase it. Six two minute rounds, eight two minute rounds, 10 two minute rounds. Then you've mastered the two minute rounds. Let's go to three minute rounds. We'll do four three minute rounds with a one minute rest. Build that up and then start shortening your rest time in between. And that right there, my friend, will definitely help you get fitter at boxing. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give me a like. Guys, if you wanna learn about body punching, watch this video next where I give you the ultimate guide to be able to punch really good body punches. Click here and check it out.